All right, guys, we're back. Hilux episode number whatever this is at. Uh, last episode, we got the body back on. Sam got the engine running. And now this episode, we're gonna bolt the body on properly, hopefully for the last time. Uh, we need to sort out the steering situation. So we got the high steer kit from Superior Engineering. So we're gonna weld that plate on, put the new steering box on, and we can finally put that arm on. Maybe give it just like a little eyeball wheel alignment and then see how that goes. So many parts have shown up. So it's finally that time where we can start properly putting everything together. We've got our intercooler kit. We've got a bunch of little lights and random stuff everywhere. I'll show you guys all that throughout the video of what we got. Oh yeah, literally flew in from Sydney last night. We've got three days to try and get this thing mostly done. Then we fly back out to Sydney for the four wheel drive show. Then we fly back in and we go to Townsville. So we've got no time. As usual, it's a last minute build. Let's see if we can get it done. All right, so I've given up on the steering box that tried to kill Sam and I because uh, we got the wrong one. Lucky we did all that work to find out it was wrong. Anyways, we're on to our intercooler kit. Um, these are actually super cheap off eBay. They're pretty sick. They come with all the bends, all silicon. It's like 300 bucks. Bargain. Anyways, gone and made up some angle line. Just threw some bolts in the top pins that are welded on. And then we're just going to bolt it on the front here. Might, might suck it back a little bit like that. And then we'll run our pipes and stuff. Run a bit of angle line off the bottom to support the bottom. And always remember to throw a bit of rubber in between these, that way they have a little bit of movement. You don't want them just hard mounted, otherwise the mounts can crack off. So let's crack in. Hi guys, this is Ben. <laughs> this guy next to me, named Ben. Hi Ben. Hello. Everyone, everyone say hello Ben. Yeah, he came over here. He was a part of our um, Built Not Bought club program where you can pay $50 a month and you might get to meet Sam and he was <laughs> one of our lucky winners. It's me, I'm sick. It's what usually happens when I go to a show and meet lots of people and they shake my hand. One of them's gonna have the boogies. So I'm not doing too much today, but intercool is in now. It may look small, but don't be deceived. It still cools the air, right? We're only got a factory turbo, factory boost, nothing crazy. That's all we need. Trans cooler, that's important. Now, I saw the boys at the Melbourne show who gave me some fittings to actually go on the gearbox because remember last time we started, it was piss and fluid, so. The fittings are on, got some Raceworks hoses up to the cooler, got one more to make, and then we can put fluid back in the um, gearbox and it should be able to run without making a mess. Coolant, we'll sort out soon. Someone put a hole in the radiator. Oh. Then someone made it worse, me, by trying to fix it. So it may leak, it will leak. So that's where we're at. Ben's running around doing body mounts. So we'll get the thing bolted down. Mitch is doing the shifter. I'm doing exhaust. There's, there's a list there. Here's the list. Can't do that because we got the wrong steering pump. Body mounts are getting done. Hose is done. Paint, we'll still wait on stuff. Waiting on rims. Tray, that's not even important at this point. Trans cooler's done, in cooler's done, vacuum line's done. Handbrake. Mountain shifter, Mitch is doing that now. And I made a really nice snorkel. What? That's not going on. Uh oh. <laughs> Why, where, where is it? Let me show you, it's really good. So this is the Meredith Metalworks one. Now I made this one, and what you can see is theirs doesn't quite match mine. So I'm gonna have to change mine because theirs is a little bit shorter. All right. <laughs> I'm about my pledge, which I'm decked up on blue bills, and I won't stop until the cash pit. There's like fall leaves in the back field. Tell her out of my face if she coming with that bull. Quick to save my peace, I'm so after school special She brainy but them jeans looking like paint I got a blessing Just talk a whole lot, no one damn well They really can't press us I notated on leaflet I'm really up a few levels with it like Excuse the mess guys, in here it's a bit of a brothel But um, we've just got this center console finally sorted out 
So I cut the floor, I don't know if I mentioned that, I cut the actual shift mount out of the BMW cab, that way the shift had something to bolt to. Made some tabs and bolted it to the floor. Now I've kind of jerry-rigged this center console to work. It doesn't look the best. Um, I wish I could have like another couple days on it and then I'd actually be able to tie it all in and make it look really nice. But for now I just cut out like where the handbrake usually goes on the Beamer and it actually manages to fit between the BMW seats that we've put in here as well. Um, I would like to add some little fridge in there if you guys have any suggestions please leave a comment below of like a nice skinny center console fridge. Uh, we're still waiting well we've actually got the PVS steering wheel for this it's a really cool Hilux carbon fiber race looking one but it's currently down in uh, Sydney because we forgot to bring it back up with us. But this pretty much wraps up the interior now we'll just finish like slapping everything back together tie all the wiring up and make it look nice and neat and then yeah we'll, we'll get in it'll be comfy to tour in. The seat's pretty good and they have all this adjustment look at this. Yeah, so if you want to smash your head on the roof. Yeah, it's ejecto yeah. There we go. Yeah, pretty sick little function. Okay, while the boys are working on the car, I'm going to get back onto some stuff on the tray. So obviously we're going to do a full canopy setup like the patrol, but for this trip coming up, we won't have time for that. We probably won't even get it painted, but we do need to finish some things off. So I've got a couple of toolboxes here. We need to mount them, make some guards. Um, right now I'm going to be working on just making another kind of rack for the back of the tray because we're actually going to be putting um, a new tent that Outback Tour are actually coming out with. We're going to whack that on here for this first trip. So just run it as a tray back with the rooftop. Um, so we'll knock that back bar up. I'm just going to follow the same sort of angle, weld it up, flush it and make it removable. So we have a canopy on, it's not in the way. Guards, I don't know whether I'll just sort of buy some universal ones or make them up. Um, and then obviously we need to do the back end, somewhere to mount tail lights. Um, and get it all wired up so it actually works properly on the car. Radio guys, so if we remember Sam talking about the steering box in last week's episode, um, I left Sam to do one thing, he got it wrong. Surprise, surprise. So he ended up getting the wrong steering box. We actually need a steering box of an LN167, which is a three bolt face to suit our superior weld on plate. So we're gonna go through the process again, removing this pitman arm again, hopefully not destroying our hands or anything, and then we can actually weld the plate on and bolt this up. So if we make our way over here, I've made up like a custom jig for the, um, for the press. Ugh, so we can put this big beggar in. That's impressive. That is quite impressive, isn't it? So we put this big beggar up here. Ugh. Slide that in. Hold it with your knee, because Sam doesn't want to help, because he's filming. Get a bunch of power steering fluid all over your leg. And then realize the new jig that you made up doesn't work because it's a different steering box. The Facebook group told us to do. In a beer, Listen to the Facebook group. Hello nice people, Sam told me to tell the nice people what we've been up to. So, lucky to the LN106 owners group on Facebook. Actually a very good group, very direct. Oh! They taught me that you don't need whatever the this rod is when you do high steer. Apparently that stops it moving. Torque rod. Torque rod. <laughs> it, talks, it talks to the rod and then that rod talks to the diff and it stops the talking, shuts them all up. So, we're going to remove that, delete L, O, delete O cut it off the back, the mount off the back of the chassis, I think, I don't know. 
didn't get that far down the group chat. And then mount the steering box. We've got it bolted up so we know where roughly it has to sit. And then we can do this high steer conversion thing. So I'm going to roll Alright, so <laughs> earlier we were swapping out the shackles to lower the Luxy and uh, Ben decided to drive the forklift. Clearly not forklift certified. Chucks are in reverse. Over our 15 amp lead plugged into the welder. Completely over it, would have felt it. Chucks are in drive. Pulls it forward and destroys our lead. Uh, I don't think that one's going to pass the test and tag. Then the lead was obviously ran behind the welder through the gas bottle. Pulls on the gas bottle because he just doesn't give up when he feels the resistance. Snaps the chain holding the gas bottle. Gas bottle kamikazes and nearly kills us all. Destroys the regulator. So now he's banned from the tools. <laughs> he is now on a f***ing broom for the rest of his life. So basically I owe Sam a 15 amp lead and a new rig. And a new heart for me because it dropped when that f***ing bottle hit the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I f***ed up. Sincerely apologise for anyone that was trying to um, learn how to do high steer. You're not gonna, because I just finished it without <laughs> realising. <laughs> it's done. So, I'll just try and walk you through and then Sam can add some animations on the screen and little pictures, and that'll help. So we had this plate, plate went on wrong, because some people at the Sydney show informed me that it was wrong, which I really appreciate. Took plate off, went and bought the IFS steering arm, which is 40 mil longer, so you can position this way further back. Put plate back on, tacked it in, checked for clearance, all goods cuz. Welded the plate out, drilled out the holes, put it in. Well painted it. So we are, so now what? Getting, um... So now we find center of box, which is done by, it goes full lock the whole way till the box bottoms out, then you mark it, and then mark the shaft. Full lock the other way, then you find the middle just by eyeballing it, and then mark that, comes back to middle, Happy days. Now we can put on this pitman arm that was also supplied in the kit by Superior. So we're gonna bolt it on here first because the wheels are perfectly straight at the moment. So smack her on there. And then you're gonna adjust your tie rod to suit until the spline is happy. That way you have a good steering line. Then we'll just take the wheel off, reposition the wheel because the clock spring is already broken so it doesn't matter. So basically what some people at Sydney told me is you need to push the box back till it pretty much touches the cab. That's when you know you're at good clearance. All right, well Mitch is playing with uh, steering things. I got some deliveries. We got a Raceworks fitting. We needed a banjo for the turbo. We also got a very cheap hose, which is very expensive because they're always expensive from NZ. Power steering hose to connect from BMW pump to Hilux box. 200 bucks. Always expensive, not too bad though. We also got um, a new shaft from Farrow's. Shout out to Farrow's because he's he's like, man, look, it's a Hilux, they're weak, but I'm gonna give you a badass draft shaft that can handle a thousand horsepower. This thing is pretty much bigger than a patrol shaft. And we've gone for a patrol uni on one end because of that, but he's actually made a patrol sized Hilux uni on the other end. So it uses a full size uni, not a little one. It's pretty badass, so That's he's done well. It's very hectic draft, it's very heavy. It's strong, I can tell it's strong. So it'll be good when we go to 500 horsepower with this thing. So shaft in, steering, turbo has fluid so we can start it, get some fluid in the gearbox. Better drive this thing today, hopefully. Got our new wheels to put on, the brakes are bled up. We're on. Delivery this morning, uh, we got some new Lenzo wheels. Now we're running the exact same as the Patrol because obviously we're trying to keep this as like a little version of the Patrol. So we've got these Lenzos in a 17 inch rim. These are called the M79s. I believe we've got these in a Neg 12 or a Zero offset. Neg 12, all right, we got them in a Neg 12. Uh, we're gonna throw these, wrap these in some 33s from our good friends down at Black Bear. Now we've ran Black Bear tires for four or five years now. Uh, Sammy's run them on the patrol forever. I ran them on my personal cars. I've had 33s, 35s. We did go for the MTs in this range. They look tough, they bag out really well off-road and they're actually fucking quiet on the road for a muddy. I've had some tires and they've been absolutely shocking. So that's why we decided to go for the black bears. They've been good to us and they never, they never puncture. 
All right, we've gone flat chap the last few hours. The uh, steering is done, so it steers. Mitch has gone and put wheels and tires on, so they're on. Now, fun fact, we've actually started this car twice and both times the camera wasn't really rolling. The first time there was no audio. The second time, we just didn't film it. So we need to run it up again now because I'm, now we've got a power steering box. We can make sure the fluid gets sucked through. We're gonna check water levels. We do have that banjo fitting on the turbo now so there'll be no oil leak and we can let it run a bit longer to get it up to temp, make sure we've got enough coolant in there. Uh, check other levels, I've done transfer case, automatic, we need to run it through the gears and check the level on that. And just, I'll pull out my Carly app again and just run a fault scan, make sure nothing else has popped up. That's the plan for now. See if it starts, because we always have this drama where there's not enough battery power, but we'll see how we go. A few moments later. All right, we had a couple little dramas, but we're back. We've got a better battery this time. She should fire up. Look at that. The tray's not bolted down, it's making a rattle. So now we're just gonna make sure all the floors are good. Um, power steering should be working. So, yeah, sweet. Power steering's working. It's rear responsive. Which is good, so. Gotta jump onto the Carly app now. With that up, I can actually scan all the temperatures. So we'll run it up and then make sure that the thermostat and stuff's working. And then once we're good with that, we can do the transmission fluid. So I don't have the actual selector working yet on the gearbox, so. Once that's sorted, we can run it through the gears and check that fluid, but everything else should be good, hopefully. We've got a Libby Bash. The next day. Guys, I feel like I've been hit by a bus. Every muscle in my body hurts. So I've been training so hard. I lied, I just, I've been going for a walk in the morning up my street. Yeah, look, it's time to get the old metabolism happening again, I feel. I think we need to do a bit of a lap because a bit's been done. We've got our intake on, and we've got a new battery going in. All the clamps for the turbo's done. We're about to wire up the lights. The wheels are on. We've put some temporary guards here. We've just cut up some ones we had. Seats are in, bolted. We've got to put the center console when we finally got the shifter working uh, because it's got one of those things on a BMW where you got to have your foot on the brake to get out of park. Now I wired that up and it still didn't work. It turns out the little mechanism was missing out of the shifter. So I had to basically delete that part. Tray's been temporarily put together. We're going to paint this and powder coat it when we get back. There will be more episodes on this build when we do a full canopy setup, but We've just put the tray on for now. We're gonna go just bareback alley for this trip. Jamie from PBS hooked us up with a mint steering wheel. So this is a 200 kind of style one. They do fit a Hilux if you're wondering. So we're getting there, an exhaust mount to sort out. I've put transmission fluid in it, it does move. We did the brakes the other day, so I think we're ready to fire it up and just do a little drive around the paddock and see if it shifts anything, nothing's pissing fluid or anything, and then we can continue on with just finishing the last few little bits and pieces. The biggest job is just building a bar for this thing. We do have the original one, but it's not really gonna fit, so it would be ideal to get something on there. So let's go for our first drive, I guess. I'm so, I'm so sorry, I can't even hold the camera up. What we're gonna do is maneuver it out of here, check for brakes, transmission, we'll need to check the fluid after. Hopefully it'll change gears, so that's the biggest worry for me, because it's not manual. New battery's a good start. What a moment. This hasn't moved in so long. Bit smoky. We're getting better at this car building thing. Get in! Lucky we've got five acres here. Bit of room. Uh, we'll try, let's make sure it shifts. Something sounds leaky down there. Yes! All right. We do, do a limmy check. So Mitch and I got a little bit excited yesterday. We went for a burn down the back of the paddock. We weren't filming, but she ripped hard. 
So this morning, we're gonna film a bit of it actually working. We need to finish this episode with some driving, of course. But the trip we're leaving on tomorrow, I'm actually in the patrol, so Mitch and his mate Luke are in the Hilux, so they're gonna be in it now, and we're gonna let them have a rundown in the paddock. Just a bit of quality testing. We need to make sure this thing's good for the trip. If not, it's just highway driving. We're gonna make sure she works. It doesn't have four wheel drive yet. Doesn't have a lock diff. You just gotta throttle out to get out of things. So let's go for a rip. God, it looks good. What a rig. Well, not bad at all for day one of testing. A few little issues, obviously. The box seems to be shifting a little bit early. It probably needs some time to learn to tune. Without it being manualized, it's kind of kicking through gears too early and dying in the ass a bit. But we'll sort that out, get some limmy happening. Also, the rear diff isn't locked at all. Like, not even LSD, full open center. So it's just spinning one wheel. That's no good. I want to get a locker in this thing. And obviously, we don't have four wheel drive. But it runs, and it should be enough for our first trip. So stay tuned, guys. In the next couple of weeks, we're heading up north. 10 days, we're hitting the road with the GU and the Hilux. Two black rigs. Let's go. We'll see you there.